Hi, my name's James O'Neill. I'm doing this video called well, United Kingdom. I'm going to talk about uh, something we're not really keeping our eye on as ordinary people, you know. Because we trust the politicians to tell us when things are going to be bad or when things need looking at. And also, we've got that, where's the pea? You know, where you have three cups and you move it about with the pea. What you should be paying attention to, you don't know where it is. Because they're keeping you distracted. There's so many distractions at this moment in time. So we've got this thing where they're building up the propaganda against Russia again. It's Russia, it's Russia, it's Russia. Under Biden was interviewed the other week, Sunday morning, on the Sunday morning TV. I uh, forgot which channel it was. He had the woman there. And he said, and she asked him about his laptop, and he said, I don't remember. I, I no, that's not mine. It, 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 it. He said it's possibly a Russian uh, fucking media. Uh, what's it? Scam. It, it's Russia. Russia have like created false information about me. Russia have like leaked these videos of me with young girls. Video. Russia have like created these false documents. Remember, like the uh, the Hitler documents when that. Remember when that guy got done? The Hitler Diaries. He fooled a load of people that he'd found the Hitler Diaries. Well, that's what under Biden's saying. It's Russia, it's Russia. So he's starting again where it's the Russia propaganda, you see. And uh, with his dad being in government, you know. But Russia's stuff going on. And it's, it's to do with the Holy Mother Church of Russia will not back down. It will not submit to the one world church. You've got the Trinity. You've got the State of Israel, the Zionist. You've got the Vatican. And you've got the Muslim religion. But it's deemed that the Sunnis of Saudi Arabia represent all Muslims across the planet. The Catholics represent all Christians across the planet. And then you've got the separate Jewish issue. You know, the sons of Abraham and all that stuff. And these people are claiming it as the planet as theirs. And they're going to set up this one world church, which I've talked about. But they're going to be your three head ones. And everybody else has to be subservient. But Russia will not be subservient. And then China's a separate issue. Because basically communism is a, is a religion. So that comes into it technically. But the Russians say, no, we're equal partners. And Iran say the same. That's why all this aggression is against Iran. Because they won't submit to the Trinity. With the Vatican at the head of the Trinity. So that's why you've had all these years of pressure. But I've talked about it for years. So you've had people saying, oh, we're getting close to war. I don't know what it's been like on British TV, but basically, people are being programmed that we're near this cliff edge of a war with Russia. And to make things worse and more dramatic, the American military were going to send American ships into the Black Sea, which is basically the same as Russians sending missile carriers, missile ships, into the Gulf of Mexico or off the coast of Los Angeles. It's exactly the same as Russian ships, warships, cruising around the Gulf of Mexico. Now, America wouldn't stand for that. America wouldn't have it. But Russia is supposed to stand by and as Russian ships sail through that narrow gap into the Black Sea. Because you've got to go through Constantinople, you've got to go through the Dardanelles. You know, Gallipoli, where the British and Australian, Australian, New Zealand and British troops and French troops all came a cropper, that narrow stretch of water. Oh, hang on, no, sorry. Is it? No, I think I've got me got me situations wrong. No, I might be right. I'll get a map. I'll have a look. 
Yeah, because you've got the Caspian, the Caspian Sea separate, that's isolated. Yeah, so it's the Black Sea. So Turkey's involved as well, you know, because Turkey is a member of NATO. So the idea is it's game, NATO games and all that crap. So, doing all this, and it's building up the tension. Well, Putin just like, Putin doesn't fall for it. Putin doesn't get involved because he knows it's all rubbish and he knows they can't, he knows he knows what cards he's got and his cards are far superior to the American cards because America is all bluff it's all bluff and what they're doing is they're ratcheting up the Ukraine and Russian conflicts over the eastern regions of the Ukraine that broke away now I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to show you something that you won't get shown on the British media and you won't get shown on the American media. I will show it you. Because I was talking about it and I've got videos here. I've been back over my old stuff and found it. And I've always talked about this imaginary war with Russia. And I actually did a video where I said, uh, in 2016, where I said, <coughs> Russia have won the war, or Putin's won the war without firing a shot. He beat Obama, he beat John McCain, he beat the Senate, he beat the Congress without firing a shot. He's beat them. And a lot of it is to do with the Ukraine. But you can also go back to Georgia, Ossetia. When Georgia invaded South Ossetia, you had North Ossetia, South Ossetia. They're just tiny little regions on the map. And Georgia claimed South Ossetia. And Ossetia was like an independent region that after the the Soviet Union broke up but Russia guaranteed the sovereignty of Ossetia it just did it had a deep sea port which is militarily desirable and Georgia invaded South Ossetia it's like North Dakota South Dakota imagine them two being independent and uh, whatever state is south invades South Dakota so a northern state comes in to protect it. All that stuff. It's all maps. It's all map stuff. Now Georgia did that because America promised to back him up. George Bush. He promised sincerely that he would back him up. And the American government, George Bush, Republicans, whatever, Congress, because they're all in it together, the Democrats as well, Congress, Senate, they backed Georgia and they gave him Loads of military aid, they gave them tanks, the uniforms were the same, the helmets, it was all military stuff from the Pentagon, all brand new, they got it all, they rigged out the Georgian army, and then America promised to back the Georgians up, diplomatically, and, you know like you get a minder, you know like some kid in the schoolyard start beating up a smaller kid, and he's beating him up because he knows he's got a big minder with him, a big kid. Nobody challenges him. Well, that's what America was. They were the big kid, the big bully behind the bully. They were the big bully behind the bully. Well, Putin just didn't give a shit. And he just woof. And he whitewashed Georgia. He whitewashed them. Four days. Well, the same happened with the Ukraine. The Ukraine were backed up by John McCain, Obama. The, go, uh, the ambassador was Victoria Noonan. Her husband was one of the, was on the board of uh, Monsanto. What's the Ukraine famous for? The bread basket of Russia when it was the USSR. Wheat. Ukraine, the wheat that fed Russia came from the Ukraine, most of it. Cossacks and wheat, that's what it's famous for. So the husband of the ambassador is a Monsanto man and she was handing out money to all the people in Maidan Square. She had a little carrier bag with some sandwiches in and she's like that. Yeah, I'm here, to, I'm here with you. I represent America and America is with you. And the CIA were giving people money to stay in the square because they had no jobs. They were broke. Ukraine is basically a poor country. It's an impoverished country. It's got massive resources, but it's, it's 
doesn't exploit him like a lot of people. He hasn't got the capitalist system yet. It was slowly catching up. Well, the banks have gone in and manipulated it all, so they own it now. I talked about it ages ago with an American guy who was whinging. He was making a 1,000% interest ripping off Russia when Russia broke up. Making over a 1,000% interest on fucking robbing Russian industries, Russian businesses, Eastern Bloc businesses, Ukraine. And then Putin put a stop to it. So the Ukraine, it, still go, it was still going on, it's still going on now. So then what happened was, you had <coughs> the breakaway regions, but this is what you were never told, but this is what I've got links to videos of. So first I'm going to give you a video of US cancels warship deployment to Black Sea, right at the last minute, they've backed down again. All this rhetoric that's been going on for like a couple of weeks about the ships that are going to go into the Black Sea, into the heart of the Russian waters. And they're going, oh, this could mean war. There's been people on Fox and everything. Oh, we're nearing the war with Russia. Oh. Well, that's all a distraction. That's the shell game where you have the three cups. It's kept people distracted. But when it's come up to the date where the ships are supposed to sail, as per the timetable, they've cancelled at the last minute. So that's just interesting to look at. And then you've got Gravisas, the Russia-Ukraine conflict explained, which is explained in a bit, but not quite. But, but I'll reverse these. Now I'm going to put you a link to a video. And it's got a rings of something that's happened recently in America. This is what the war with Ukraine and Russia was about. I'm not bothered that Russian troops were in the, Don, the Donbass region and the, uh, the breakaway regions. I'm not bothered about that because that's Russia. That's Putin looking after Russians. And I'll explain why. I lost the link, but I was looking at something a couple of days ago when all this war talk was going on about these boats, these ships and the American politicians and NATO were involved. The head of NATO, the Danish guy, what an irrelevance. What, what the hell is it? That, but that's the European representation, you see. That's the EU. The head of NATO is a Dane. Peace-loving Danes. I used to live in Copenhagen, mate. I worked there, lived there. It's not a military nation. And yet the head of NATO is a Dane who is proper, 110% behind it. And he threatens Russia regularly. So you've got all this rhetoric that's going against Russia and Putin says, he said a simple statement, I will protect the Russian speakers of the region. That's, that's what he said. Now people won't have understood what he meant. We won't, the Brits, I did. And I'm not bragging, it's just something I, I was guided to take an interest in when I used to do my blog radio shows and uh, when I started my videos. And Putin said, I will protect the Russian speakers. I'm going to give you a video, and it's titled, Right Sector Fascist Beats People in Ukraine for Talking on Russian Language. And it's a video, and I was watching it live. I think it was 2000, uh, oh God, 2014, 2013, I was watching it live. Because I've I, been guided to take an interest in what was going on. And I got onto these obscure websites. See, YouTube was freer. 2013, 2014, YouTube was a lot freer than it is now. It was like roaming the planet on a keyboard. Not now. So this obscure website, and you'll know it's obscure by the number of views. What it was is, the guy was filming live in uh, Odessa. So, it was the Crimea, what the Russians have just took off the Ukrainians recently. It was in Odessa. What it was is, these Ukrainian right-wing fascists were roaming the streets, beating Russians up. Russian speakers, Russian ethnic Russians. Because obviously, after the Second World War, before the Second World War, Stalin was moving people all over. 
So if you had a region with a strong ethnicity, Stalin moved Russians in. Muslims, Sweden, Muslims Norway, Muslims Germany, Muslims France, Muslims UK. That's what Stalin did. He moved, forcibly moved, Russians into Latvia, Lithuania, Ukraine, Georgia, and then he deported their people over to the Urals and Siberia. If an ethnic, ethnic people was stubborn and resistant, he moved them out and then he moved Russians in. So you've got all these descendants of Russians from pre-Second World War and after the Second World War. And it's like the Welsh and the Scots living in London. Living in the south of England, living in Newcastle, whatever. That's what it's the equivalent of. These people, because borders are false, aren't they? We know that. We're realising that. They're not real. What, what separates people is the language and their history. So Stalin mixed it all up. Well, they're still there, obviously. It's like the Welsh are still here. The Scots are still in London. Why should they move? But it is what it is. Well, this fascist, and I'm talking Nazi fascist movement, rose in the Ukraine, encouraged by the CIA, encouraged by the American State Department, encouraged by... Victoria Noonan and Monsanto and all that. And they wanted them to break away from Russia. So they, they wanted a clean break with Russia. So that they would then be open to capitalism. Borrowing money off the IMF. Borrowing money off America in aid. That they'd have to pay back with interest. Same with Europe. And then they hand over their resources to the capitalist system. That's all. It was just, just part of the game of the theft of the wealth of a nation. Anyway, these gangs are roaming about. And you're watching them beat. I was watching this live. Back in the day. And you've got a Russian and they're booting him to foot. And it's just basically like football hooligans. And then they're beating somebody else up. Somebody tries to protect this guy. And he's there and he's battered for speaking Russian. And here we are now in 2021. Russia, and Putin makes a simple statement. I will protect Russian speakers because Ukraine's building up to take back the regions because that's where the wealth is that's where the mines are for the coal and the steel alright it's all been battered by the war but Russia's rebuilding it it's being rebuilt 10-15 years down the line they will vote to be a part of Russia and the Ukraine can't do anything about it well, Ukraine wants them back. It's screwed up. And it's all based, they've screwed up based on the anti-Russian sentiment. They went too far, too quick. I remember watching a video where they stormed into a Russian-speaking uh, TV station, radio station. And they were throwing Russian producers out, Russian technicians. And they beat one bloke up, a Russian presenter. Because like we've got different, uh, like you have podcast on, what's it? Well, you had this like Russian TV station, call it what network, independent network, and he stormed in and beat him up. And I was watching it live, and the main guy was an out and out Nazi. And he used to storm about with a machine gun, he used to go in and beat him up. They had to assassinate him. The Ukrainian government, once he like broke away from Russia, they had to assassinate him because he was too far gone. Because the Nazis that he represented, they got so many seats in the government. And he was the main one. And he went into one of the cabinet meetings with his machine gun. And he said, nobody takes this off me. Three weeks later, he's dead in the, in the gutter. He's in, he's in like, country lane. T-shirt up. You know, ugh, ugh, big fat beer belly. And you can see the bullet holes in him. I've seen the same happen in Serbia. Tiger Le Legion, football hooligans from Partizan Belgrade. They formed their own little clique. They did the same in the Ukraine, the Azov Brigade. Uh, Dynamo Kiev football fans, they all joined up together into the Azov Brigade. And they were all Nazis, football hooligans. And that was financed by a Jewish oligarch and his money came from the CIA. And he, he, this Jewish, this Jewish Ukrainian oligarch financed this battalion, the Azov Battalion, 
the Azov Brigade. He financed it. Uh, fucking tanks, armoured cars and everything. How does he do it? Well, it's the CIA. He, he rigged them out. They had the best equipment. And he went to war against like the uh, eastern regions. They attacked the airport. This video, I used to watch videos of him. I used to watch it. There was a guy called Motorola. And... There was another guy called Gigi. I used to watch him. They were there at Donetsk Airport. Where all the English football fans went. They're in the ruins. It's, it's just like... It's like a... Someone that's been bombed in the Second World War in Berlin. They're all living in the ruins like rats fighting the Ukrainians. And the Ukrainians were getting slaughtered. It was an unbelievable war and we saw nothing here. Yet I used to watch it because YouTube was free. You could roam the world on your keyboard in them days and it's gone so quick, that freedom to do that. Anyway... <coughs> Go watch this video and you understand what I'm saying about. Now here's the thing, you see all these people just roaming about beating Russians up. They look like, how can you tell a Russian? They're all walking about in the street. How can you tell a Russian? Well you tell him by the way he speaks. You speak to him and he answers you back in Russian or Ukrainian with a bit of an accent. You ask his name, you do whatever and then you beat him up. Where have we seen that recently? Well, we only saw it in America with Antifa and BLM attacking Trump supporters. When Trump held his rallies on the edges, on the fringes, like jackals and hyenas and wolves with BLM and Antifa. And in the evening when it had all wound down and people were making their way back to their old cells or whatever and they were on their own, boom, boom, boom. We even saw that guy get shot dead. We saw an Antifa guy go up put the gun to the back of the head of a Trump supporter who just had a Trump hat on bang and he blew his fucking head off that's what was happening in the Ukraine and it's ha it was happening in America before the election and after the election it's exactly the same energy of hate now I'm going to give you another video where these same people on the day, I watched it live. There was a protest to say, yeah, we, we, we have the right to speak our language. Just like the Trump supporters have the right to wear the MAGA hat. They've got a different opinion. They've got a different voice, political voice. So the Russians had a march through Odessa in the Crimea that the Russians took back. Because them Ukrainians were buggers. And this live video, you watch it and it's dead boring to start off. You know, you've got that. Because that one where you get the guy beat up, he's part of that. So he's, he's a cut from the longer video. Honestly, I was watching it live. And it started so slowly. Just people getting beat up in the street. And they all made the way to this march to attack the Russians. This Russian protest. There weren't many there. There's only a few. And they all fled into a building that used to be a union building. It's like an old building. All columns and that. And they fled into it. It wasn't that big. It's only like four floors. And it was in a big square. So it was open all the way round. And they fled into it. And they got surrounded. So they had to flee into this building. To flee the crowd. So the crowd surrounded them. And they set fire to it. With the people, with the Russians, with the Russian-speaking people, they were Ukrainians, but they were.